Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, let's make an inclined ice dyed diamond shirt. The shirt was prepped like normal, washed and dried, soaked in a soda ash solution for 20 to 30 minutes, then I wrung it out of my panda spin dryer so it's just barely damp. I've also turned the shirt inside out. I'm going to begin by centering the shirt, and this process is going to go really fast. But the purpose for centering a shirt is so that I can get both sides of the front of the shirt right next to each other and both sides of the back of the shirt next to each other. When I do that, after I apply the dye, both sides of the front of the shirt are going to look a lot more alike and the same thing with the back. I have a link down below this video in the description which shows how to center a shirt. Okay, so now that I have the shirt centered, I need to go ahead and make my diamond pattern on the shirt. To do that, I'm going to take the hem of the shirt and fold it up to the top or the neck portion of the shirt, basically folding the shirt in half. Then using a straight edge, I'm going to draw a diagonal line onto the shirt. The center point of the shirt is going to be the middle of the diamond. Now I'm going to fan fold this line and tie it up with some kite string. I'm choosing to use kite string for this project because I want to hold the folds tight, but I don't want any of the white lines that sinew would give. After I've tied the initial line, I'm going to fan fold the rest of the shirt and tie it with kite string as well. I'm going to incline ice dye this shirt, but normally when I make a diamond like this, I put the diamond area at the top, but this time I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to start on the outside edge and apply my color there, and put the diamond down at the bottom where all the color runs toward the diamond. Before I begin applying the dye, because this shirt is a little bit wider, it won't fit down inside of my vinyl guttering. So in order to incline it, I've placed it on one of my wire racks and I'm making an ice barrier around the shirt using some silicone cake molds. I've placed one end of the rack down inside of my plastic container and the other end is hanging over the edge, so the shirt is at an incline. To hold the silicone cake molds up next to the shirt, I'm going to use some wooden clothespins and attach them to the rack. I have a link down below in the description for where I purchased these silicone cake molds. I also list the dye colors that I've used on this shirt and have links to several of the other items that I use when I tie dye. I've placed the dye colors on my rack in the order in which I'm going to apply them. I'm starting with Cherry Blush from Pro Chemical and Dye, followed by True Purple from Grateful Dyes, Red Number no. 9 from Grateful Dyes, Cotton Candy from Pro Chemical and Dye, and Grape from Custom Colors. I'm going to continue repeating that dye pattern down the shirt. Okay. 
Now I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of dry soda ash over the top of the die and finish with a layer of ice. After the first layer of ice melted, there was still quite a bit of undissolved dye sitting on top, and so I went ahead and added a second layer of ice and allowed it to melt through. Once the second layer of ice melted, I checked the back side and there were a couple areas that were a little bit light, so I went ahead and added a third layer of ice and let it melt. After the third layer of ice melted, I allowed the shirt to process for about 36 hours before I rinsed it out. I started rinsing the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I gradually warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the shirt. After rinsing for a while, I decided to go ahead and soak the shirt in hot water along with a little bit of Dawn dish detergent. This will help get out some of the excess dye without having to continually rinse. When the water cooled off, I changed out the water and repeated the process several times until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt into my washing machine, along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent, and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you guys think? Do you like the effect of sticking the diamond down at the bottom of the incline instead of up at the top? I kind of do. I think it looks pretty interesting this way. The shirt was dry when I applied the dye, so I don't think it moved quite as much as it would have if it would have been damp. I'm going to have to try this again, but use a damp shirt. I like the color combination too. I like red and purple together, and I like the two pinks that I added in too. They're really close in color though, so I can't see a huge difference between the two of them. I also got pretty decent color saturation. I was a little bit concerned about it since it was such a thick fold. So overall, I really like the shirt. I think the color combination is really pretty, and I think it looks very interesting. Honestly, the red diamond in the middle, the purple that's going right around the edges of that, the purple is a little bit muddled right in the corners of the diamond, and it almost makes it look like a baseball field with the bases being at the corner. I don't know, it's kind of different. But what do you guys think? Do you like the incline going down toward the diamond or do you like the diamond on the top side? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. And if you've enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.